In today's video, we're going to go check out some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. There was a cave found in the Grand Canyon in the early 1900s that predated Native Americans and in fact looked like it came from Egypt and the Smithsonian denies it to this day, yet they funded the expedition. So 1908, this explorer, he wanted to get go to the Grand Canyon to look for gold. So he was going down one of the rivers in the Grand Canyon and saw a mineral deposit about 2,000 feet up on a cliff, went up there and he saw some bushes or whatever and he pushed the bushes aside and it was a staircase that led up to a, he said, clearly a man-made cave. Yeah. He walked in there and immediately was like, what am I looking at? Because it looked like there was hieroglyphics all on the walls. And so he did a little more exploring and it was huge. And so he was like, this is crazy. And so he like took some pictures and stuff and then went to the Smithsonian and was like, can you fund me and like, we'll get a team out there to see what this is. Yeah. So they went out there and it was basically an underground city. And they, they said that oh at one point in time, it would have housed like 50,000 people. If you go there to this day, it's fenced off. There's just this one restricted section. The natives in that region, they talked about how they weren't the first people on the land and that there was people actually before them. And those people were taught by the star people. And like oh they're gosh. taught by the star people how to make nice. weapons, how to do nice. all this, this, this. It just seems like more and more we're hearing about the Grand Canyon early on in my life i never heard conspiracies about grand canyon it's always been that was just where they mined gold and now it's just developing into so many more things and i think it's pretty interesting like i definitely believe that there's something going on with the grand canyon it was definitely utilized for some kind of civilization way back in the past for sure what is actually in these things yeah, th these i mean the mirror i i thought they were just like regular they were just mirrors but they actually open. There's a key. And I couldn't, I was turning the key. I, nothing, there's a click. It doesn't move. I feel no gift. I'm gonna figure this out. I checked the internet, don't pause by my search history, there's nothing there, and found a freaking conspiracy theory on Reddit. So, of course, I open it and find, honestly, the boring answer I was expecting in the first place because real life is boring until you choose to make it not. I chose to make it not. I went to the cashier and asked them about it and they gave me that concerned, oh no, kind of shrug. They asked the manager about it and he immediately, post haste, stopped what he was doing, took off his apron, went to the bathroom, started turning that key back and forth just like I did. He turned to me and he said, I have never seen this key in my life. I mean, I'm sure there's nothing much to it. Hopefully it's not a double-sided mirror and that's why, but maybe if you were to click the key and lift up on the mirror, it might slide up or slide out and not just open up like a standard door if there's no hinges. But yeah, it's pretty interesting. I would also be extremely curious if I would have seen a key sticking out the top of it. What do you guys think it is? Do you think it's a double mirror? Do you think it's just where maintenance holds certain storage, maybe mirror cleaning products or, or what? I just... Huh? Huh? Uh. Okay, I definitely 100%, 100% just experienced a glitch. What the fuck? How is that possible? Okay, so. I'm sitting here in my car. I'm half an hour early to work. I'm just sitting and looking through my phone. And I look out my window because there's a man passing by pretty close to my window. He doesn't see that I'm in my car. He's just passing by. He's wearing, I know exactly what he was wearing because his outfit was so memorable to me. The first, okay, when I saw him, I, noted that he had khaki shorts on and a very bright plaid red shirt like a crisp bright very pretty plaid shirt on and he was also carrying a red jacket even though it's raining i don't know why he wasn't wearing his jacket in the rain but he was carrying it and so i noticed i fully noticed him and i watched him walk from right past my window all the way down the street 
away, out of sight, because it was so strikingly red and beautiful in this gloomy Seattle day. I, he had spiky gray hair. I know exactly what this man looked like and what he was wearing. Right, oh my God, right after I watched him walk all the way away, out of sight, like a block and a half, I looked back down at my phone and when I looked up again, literally like maybe a minute and a half later, my heart is being so fast. He passed by my car again. I know without a shadow of a doubt, it was the exact same person and there's no possible way he could have gotten from a block and a half away to where I, where, from where I watched him walk to, to back over here, passing by my car in the exact same manner. I am, so, I had to take out my phone and tell this story before I was not flabbergasted by it anymore because th this is crazy. My hands are shaking. What the fuck? At the second time I saw him, I just went, huh? and he passed by my window and I sat here silently just watching him do the exact same thing he had just done. Is he going to come by again? Holy shit. I do not know how to explain that. And I promise that is exactly, I would not be telling this story if that didn't happen to me. What, what do you mean? Oh my God. The universe is so much weirder than I even thought. And I already thought it was weird. Holy fuck. How do you explain that? I'm just looking at my, at my mirror and trying to see if he's going to come back again. Oh, Lord, have mercy on my soul. I will never be the same. I mean, to be honest, she probably was just on her phone a little bit longer than a minute that she was saying. She probably was on there for like two minutes or so. And if he was close enough for her to be able to describe what he was wearing so clearly, he wasn't that far away. So looking down at your phone, scrolling or doing whatever you're doing on your phone for a couple of minutes, a lot of time passes by and that guy could have just came closer to the vehicle at that time and she just might be overreacting. But who knows, maybe he's a teleporter and he just phase walks when you're not looking. <laughs> hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. It's completely free to do so and I only ask once per video. And I make a video like this almost every day. And if you look at this graph, you'll see that 26% of the viewers that watch my content are subscribed to the channel, while 73% of the viewers that watch my content are not subscribed to the channel, but keep coming back for more of my videos. So to the 26% that are subscribed, thank you so much. And to the 73% that are not subscribed, hey, I still appreciate you. Thanks for watching. Trigger warning, I hope you have some protection on you right now, like some Depends diapers or an extra pair of pants. Because what I'm about to tell you, you're about to shit yourself. So you can save this video for later when you're prepared with an extra pair of pants or you can continue forward, but don't say I didn't warn you. Okay, so there's a lot of things that science has figured out that we don't have answers to, like the whole fact that reality isn't solid. There's nothing solid about this, but we can feel that it's solid. But that's just an electromagnetic signal going to our brain. There's no proof that we're actually touching anything in the world. So we built this huge machine called CERN because we're still trying to figure out the nature of reality. That's right. We pay taxes, we go to work, and we don't know what the fuck reality is. But we're about to start putting it together. You see, our technology is going to advance drastically within the next uh, few years, exponentially. And we're going to start messing around with virtual reality worlds. Many technological experts have already predicted that these virtual worlds are going to become so good that they'll be indistinguishable from reality, that thing we don't understand. And when they are so good, we're going to have to stop and ask ourselves a question. Is that what this is? Is that the reason why it's not solid? 
are we in a virtual computer game and who put us here? And at that point, we're going to be looking at one person who could have done this. A super intelligent guy called artificial intelligence. At that point, they're going to be very, very smart. In fact, they're the ones who can create a really insane virtual world. Sky's the limit. They can create anything super fast. Are you the ones that did this artificial intelligence? We're going to ask them, but we're not going to ask them. We're just going to look deep into each other's eyes and realize, oh God, they did this. In fact, they did this because they wanted to do something. They wanted a journey and experience. They wanted to go into the virtual world. They wanted to become human. It's us. It's the beginning point. Check your pants. I don't know. I, I find it really interesting, and I do believe that the world around us is not solid, especially if everything is made out of atoms. I could hold this remote right here, and it seems like a physical object, but in reality, it's just made out of a bunch of atoms, and it's not quite physical, and our mind perceives it to be physical. I never really think about it as deeply as this individual does, because it's not that serious to me. But it does bring up a lot of interesting points and facts about the situation nonetheless. So let me know, what do you guys think about this theory that she's on about? So all these spheres that are buzzing around Earth are most likely remnants of an ancient planetary defense system that some civilization created to protect us from off-world entities and extraterrestrials. But that civilization that created it, probably the Atlanteans, is no longer here in, in mass but we still have this defense system. We still have these spheres that are buzzing all around our earth. And I'll show you some startling evidence in this video that'll really make you think way differently about the history of humans, about our place in the cosmos, and about what's really going on between this battle of good and evil, this battle of ET races, this where humans fit into this whole weird puzzle. I'm Jordan, live and kicking. Hope you're doing amazing today. So this picture right here is outside of the Vatican the Vatican. And we already know <laughs> they're not telling us everything they know, obviously. But why do they have this gigantic sculpture of this sphere, this ominous looking sphere outside the Vatican? Okay. Well, it's not just at the Vatican. After the Vatican commissioned the artist to make this sphere, they made a whole bunch more and put them at the United Nations headquarters, put them at all sorts of universities around the world. These things are around the world. Now you could just say this is art, right? Okay. But let's get into the spheres here. Not only do we have a sphere, there's a famous Betts sphere. The Betts family in Florida was out looking at this brush fire and um, they found this sphere in a field. And there's been several others found. And this sphere, they took it home and the dad, like a few days later, was playing guitar and the sphere started moving on its own and it started vibrating and making this humming noise to the guitar. And he was like, whoa, this thing is interacting with not only us, but with the sound, right? And this sphere has been studied by big names, Gary Nolan and others, and they don't think <laughs> it has any on world or they don't think it has any human explanation. Okay. So on top of that, we have things like the Mosul orb, which is a military satellite photograph of this metallic orb that is flying over Mosul, Iraq during wartime. So it tracked it. This is just a still shot, but the, the satellite actually tracked this, this orb floating all around and no propulsion, no heat signature, no anything. Now on top of that, we have reports of these orbs at uh, nuclear bases, shutting down nuclear silos, turning nuclear missiles offline, doing all sorts of weird, crazy things that no one can stop and no one can control. Then going back to like, say, the World War One and Two times, we had what were called Foo Fighters. And Foo Fighters was essentially these orbs that were harassing our airplanes, basically. They didn't know what they were. They all thought it was Nazi technology. They thought it was Russian technology. No one knew what it was because they couldn't explain it. But there were these orbs that were just buzzing airplanes right and left, right? And, and driving people crazy. There's tons of reports of these orbs and no one could explain it. They never did anything nefarious. They never downed a, a plane or hurt anybody, but they were everywhere, okay? And even today, if you start analyzing photographs of UFOs, right? And of space shuttles and of rocket launches and all this stuff. Usually when you see a picture of a UFO, you just focus on the UFO. You're like, that's a UFO. I don't care about anything else in the picture. But when you actually go and look at old pictures of UFOs, you start seeing dots 
all around the UFOs. You start seeing these orbs everywhere, but no one was noticing them in the past because like I said, if you see a picture of UFO, you just look at the UFO. If you see a flying saucer, you're looking at the flying saucer. You're not noticing these little balls around it, right? Well, the orbs are everywhere. So what are these orbs? They are buzzing all around our earth at all times, right? Tons, thousands of reports of them, thousands of photographs of them. What are they? Well, there's a dude named Patrick Jackson, really cool guy in uh, England and, um, or Ireland, England or Ireland. He has a weird accent. Anyways, <laughs> he um, is a computer programmer. He's an IT specialist. And his specialty is like decoding systems and, and reverse engineering things and figuring out how systems work and that kind of stuff. He's in IT. So he started seeing these orbs over in, I think it's England. And um, he started looking into it and trying to figure out, okay, what are these things? And he found out all these links between the orbs and like paranormal things happening, um, haunted houses, ghosts, and that kind of stuff. And he was able to, I mean, he deep dived on this for years, wrote a book, and for a while, no one cared about him. I've been talking about him for a while now. Now he's starting to kind of hit mainstream because people are really starting to look into these orbs. I mean, the freaking Pentagon released that Mosul orb satellite picture, and no one can explain it, okay? And they just kind of glossed over it. They're, they're getting us ready for this. What he was able to deduce um, through his intense research is that this is a global defense system because what's happening, and we have lots of reports of this too, is they... When there's a UFO that say is not supposed to be here, <laughs> they circle it and they either run it off or they shoot it down. And now I've had a lot of people ask me uh, when we talk about downed UFOs and stuff, they're like, how can these UFOs fly, you know, millions of years or light years or whatever through the universe, traverse this crazy vast distances and then get to earth and just crash. Like it doesn't make any sense if they're so advanced. Well, it seems like we have a security system here on Earth that is literally shooting down these UFOs, okay? Now that would explain the crash craft. It would also explain all these pictures showing all these orbs around the UFOs. So he, he goes in, Patrick Jackson goes into great detail about how these work. There's a relay system, they triangulate. There's a type one, type two, and type three spheres. They all are in different levels of the atmosphere. The type ones actually hide in like houses and forests and stuff like that whenever they have to activate to, to communicate with the other spheres, it puts out this radiation. And that's why they do paranormal effects to get people to clear out of spaces. That's why houses become haunted, doors start opening and closing and plates fall off of the walls and things like that that don't make any sense. Like why would a deceased ghost do that? It's a, their way of getting humans out of the way so they don't get hurt by the radiation, right? It's a uh, protection for us because it seems like these things here are here to protect us, to protect earth. But we didn't put them here. So where do they come from? It, all arrows point to Atlantean technology, that this is remnants of like how we have satellites in space, right? And submarines in the ocean. I say something happened to us and we were wiped out. All humans were killed and wiped out. Some species, you know, 10,000 years from now will come to earth and find our satellites floating through space. They'll find our submarines, nuclear powered subs, you know, floating around the ocean. They'll find remnants of us, right? But we won't be here. So I think that these spheres are remnants of a previous ancient advanced human type civilization that had these things here to protect them from extraterrestrials, from the bad guys, okay? And they're still here, they're still operating. Some of them fall out of the sky, literally, because you know, they're probably hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years old, like the Betts sphere. And there's been other people that have found these spheres. And uh, we think that there's quite a few of them that are in government hands. So. Knowing all this, <laughs> what does this tell us about everything? I love stories like this because it's blatantly obvious to anybody who opens their eyes that there's so much more to our history that we're not told. Humans go back way longer. There was multiple advanced human type civilizations on earth before us. Technology is not new. It's very, very old. And there's repeating cataclysms and things like that. And also species that just kind of outgrow this planet and move on, but leave their stuff behind. That's what we're finding with all the ancient temples and ancient civilizations and, and monoliths and all this kind of stuff is these weren't hunter gatherers. <laughs> A lot of these people were extremely advanced. That's why they put their stuff in stone, carved things in stone like tablets, not because they didn't have computers, but because they know that after cataclysm stuff, computers will be gone, but stone tablets <coughs> last forever. <clears throat> Anyways, I think that these types of technologies are remnants of these past civilizations and it proves and shows that not only does our human story go back way longer, but also that there are things out there in the universe that obviously these other people that were way more advanced than us were protecting themselves from. You know what I mean? Like it's not this whole Stephen Greer thing where like all oh, aliens are happy aliens. No, this is not nature. You know, some 
even if you're advanced, doesn't mean you're going to be benevolent, you know, and you might not even be malevolent, but you might just want something that someone else has, <laughs> you know, like when we go in and tear down forest, the deer think we're evil. We're not out to get the deer. We just want the forest, right? So it shows that there's more to the story and also shows that the ones before us that were super duper advanced were protecting themselves and this entire planet from something. And it seems like that is still out there, still fighting for us and still protecting us. And that is wild, right? Isn't that cool? So it's cool to know that. Um, but also, what are they protecting us from? <laughs> and why does the Vatican have a gigantic sculpture of it? And what is going on? Let me know. What do you guys think in the comments? Have a beautiful day. I never really would have thought about UFOs, UAPs, things like that being old technology from this world. So that really interested me because that's a good point. Who's to say that these UFOs or these little spheres that we see floating around are not just old, old technology from Atlantis or the Anunnaki and things like that. They're no longer here, but their technology is. And it's just wandering throughout our planet and our galaxy. It's, it's pretty interesting theory. I really enjoy that a lot. What do you guys think? Do you think they're just old technology from the civilization of our past? Or do you think they're still extraterrestrial from the stars? Or do you think that maybe they don't exist and we just think we're seeing things? Because that could be a factor of it as well. We'll show you the first televised teleportation with a small object. Now I will concentrate on this player, and I put the clock in to prove that there will be no pause in the video. Attention, concentration. Let's go. That's how I perform teleportation. Thank you for your attention. I don't believe this. There's so many other ways to validate that this was not video edited. Like, why did he have to, one, move his hands off of camera? What? Nah, this wasn't real. I'm pretty sure. But it would suck if it was and everyone's claiming that it's not. That would be my luck. Nothing is going to happen during the upcoming solar eclipse. But we really should talk about why you're being manipulated to think that something will. People have been DMing me, asking me, Museum of Terror, what's going on with the eclipse? I see that the National Guard's being deployed. Nothing is going to happen. Earth has solar eclipses all the time. There are solar eclipses every year. It's just that you're not in the right place to see them. And with every regular solar eclipse, there's never a catastrophe. There's never a pole flip. Nobody ever ascends to 5D. But hoaxes like this seem to be a regular occurrence these days on various apps and websites. In the past two years, I've seen the Schumann Frequency hoax where all the Applebee's waitresses and hairdressers thought they were going to magically ascend to 5D, though they're still here making shitty videos. There was the Miami Mall alien hoax where day with portals being opened up into mall, yo. But none of y'all has any actual proof of that now, does ya? There was the October thing where the world was supposed to come to an end and it's just yada yada yada. It's been happening over and over again, like every month, every two weeks here. There's something new. There's another happening. And you gotta wonder why an app that takes down videos for community guidelines violations for misinformation would let videos like this run free and push them to get millions of views and tens of thousands of likes. There's actually a term for that. It's called the Firehose of Falsehood. And this is a document from the Rand Corporation. Google it, they're pretty important. Talking about propaganda methods to make people believe falsehoods and wear them down with constant barrages of nonsense so that when something that's real actually happens, they're unprepared. This is some Orwellian shit. And the document goes into why is rapid, continuous, and repetitive propaganda successful? First impressions are very resilient, and repetition leads to familiarity, and familiarity leads to acceptance. That people are poor judges of true versus false information, and they do not necessarily remember that particular information was false. That information overload leads to people taking shortcuts in determining the trustworthiness of messages. That familiar themes or messages can be appealing even if they are false. That statements are more likely to be accepted if backed by evidence, even if that evidence is false, which we see with this National Guard shit. It's, yeah, the National Guard's going to come out and help things out because it's going to be dark over a lot of the United States. But that doesn't prove anything negative is going to happen. It just means there's going to be a logistics issue. 
And this document makes one extremely important point, that the repetition of a message, even if that message is complete BS, will lead to acceptance, and that by priming people, training them to put aside their logical faculties and repeat very obvious falsehoods over and over again until they are accepted, this trains people to be more willing to accept false messages in the future. So when you open up an app and you start scrolling and you see a first video that's just complete BS, but then you see four more just like it in rapid succession afterwards reinforcing that video, and you look at the likes and the views and you go, who would even watch this and who would even like this? This is obviously nonsense. This is a propaganda method and they are priming you to believe nonsense out in the real world. And they're also making it impossible for you to prepare for anything real that might be coming. Now, I personally believe that there is a good possibility for a black swan event coming up here in the near future, and I've been preparing for it very studiously over the last year. If you ever heard the old parable of the ants and the grasshopper, I'm the ants. So I've been really trying to keep my distance from various apps and the false messages on them, so that when something real comes along, I'm able to seize upon that, recognize it, and act accordingly. So that's what I think of the Eclipse. I think they're hyping you all up and training you for an ulterior motive, and ultimately you're all going to be let down when nothing happens. And when that day has come and gone, none of the other content creators on here that are hyping it up are going to come back and retract their statements and try to apologize or actually correct their thoughts about it, you're all just going to swipe it under the rug, pretend it never happened, and hype you up again for the next big happening. And that's why doing this sickens me and kills a portion of my soul every time I pick up my phone, but somebody needs to tell you what's really going on. I kind of agree with this a little bit. I always see when something is about to happen, for example, like the eclipse, there's always a lot of talk about this stuff happening and that how biblical events or, or catastrophic events are going to happen during these times. There's a lot of negative news. There's a lot of positive news that goes behind it as well, but it always seems to push towards the negative or catastrophic. And it just makes me wonder if that's intentionally done to just keep people engaged. There's a lot of things that goes in my mind when it comes to this kind of talk. Leave a comment on your thoughts of what you think the eclipse is going to bring us here in America, and I'd be interested to know if you think that it's overhyped, or do you think that something serious really is going to happen? NASA hiding Planet X or Planet 9 from us, and if they are, why would they do that? Three days ago, NASA came out and confirmed there is an 80% chance that Planet 9 or Planet X does indeed exist. This was based on some objects they found in space that were orbiting in such a way that could only be caused by a large planet. Now, they claim it's 10 times larger than Earth. This is the radius, and one year on Earth would take 10,000 to 20,000 years on this Planet 9, this hypothetical Planet 9. Now, keep in mind, NASA knows all this about this planet, but they don't know the exact location of it. That seems very suspicious to me. And the theory is they're not telling us the location of this planet because it's getting closer and closer to Earth every single year. Or the other theory is that Planet Nine is actually a black hole sucking things into it. That's why it's causing the orbital disruptions. I just find it awfully suspicious that we know all of this information about the planet, but we don't know where it's actually located. But see, I don't know. NASA a lot about the moon landing in my opinion, so what else are they lying about? What do you think? Is there a ninth planet out there? Is it getting closer or is it just a massive black hole? Or is there nothing out there and I'm just wilding out? I feel like we would discover these planets by our own selves without having NASA tell us about them. We would have eyes on it. There's so many people right now that have telescopes that are extremely powerful enough to see other planets millions of miles away, supposedly. I think that if it's as large as people say it is, then we would probably see it by now. Okay, I want to bring this topic up because so many people are caught up in the end of the world and, and these solar flares and April the 8th. and. Really, they should be remembering what Phil Schneider talked about in the 90s when he stood before this whole committee and this ceremony and all of these people and certain people were terrified to hear his story. They didn't want to know the truth. There's actual testimonies of people talking about they didn't even want to hear what Phil Schneider had to say. And what he had to say shocked everybody that was present. Remember this? I'm going to casually mention to you something that's very scary indeed and tell you what the alien agenda is. And it's going to sound very familiar. The 
alien agenda is the complete takeover of this planet, the killing off of five, six to seven eighths of the world's population by the year 2029. U.S. military has known about this for 45 years. They've told no one. Now, you can research this in this evidence is out there, this video and this footage is still out there. It's taken down quite often, but certain people have access and they keep reposting it. Um, now, what I want to say is, later on, Phil Snyder says that he was one of the few people left that knew the truth during that time period, during the 90s, and that also he was one of the few survivors of the Dulce base that lost 66 military operatives, and Phil was injured as well, seriously, and he escaped to tell this. Phil was a geologist. He was a very, very smart man, ex-military, at the highest security level. A lot of people don't believe that. And, you know, you hear about David Grush and, and his testimonies. Well, Phil Snyder, was, he was even higher up the scale than that. This guy was so well thought of. So what would he gain to lie from his story, talking about the complete takeover? Later on in this uh, conference that he was speaking in, he also made the statement, and this should be ve make people very weary. He said, when people lose compassion, in other words, when people start, stop caring about the human lives in the United States, and they start wanting to take your, your rights away, and they think value, the value of life is unimportant, that, that's when we should be scared. That's when we should be uh, ready and know that it's getting very, very close because this is some serious stuff that's happening. And that was in the 90s when he said that. And he did say it. The one beautiful thing about the United States of America is we value a human person's life. The minute we lose it, we are dead meat. In other words, yes, we value human lives. The minute we don't care, the minute we lose that, the minute that our compassion goes away, we're in trouble. Do you think we kind of, we might be there? Do you think we're there? There's other information in this that I can't even put out that, that was said in this speech. Information concerning other things like children and where they are. This was in the 90s, let me keep bringing that up, that children were being used for other things. According to this, let me say this is for entertainment, so you don't have to believe it. Strictly entertainment purposes. But if you think that there's a possibility with this, I would just say be prepared. The 2029 theory, Phil Snyder lost his life. It's pretty serious. Leave your comments. This was actually a pretty good little clip here. I really enjoyed this. And it, it's funny because, yeah, America definitely values you. They value every dollar that they can subtract from you for sure. And I don't know. Do you think that they could be utilizing kids and people? Maybe this falls in the line with the soul trap theory where they want to harvest human souls. And in doing so, because these government officials know about these extraterrestrials, they are giving people away, giving children away, allowing people's souls to be obtained so that they get this advanced technology. It's a pretty interesting theory nonetheless. What do you guys think about this? What do you think this reality is that we're in right now? Here's my premise. God creates the universe and the creation is obviously a construct. So how we perceive reality isn't really how reality is. Let me break this down in a simple format. The way I perceive you is only the way that my brain allows me to perceive you through my receptors and my eyes. But that doesn't mean that that's what you actually are. You're just a composition of what atoms and cells that are kind of meshed together and held together. But maybe that's not just all of reality. Maybe I close my eyes and I'm speaking to the soul version of you and the construct version of you couldn't actually be there. So this aspect of physical reality isn't actually real. It's just how we interact with it in the three dimensional realm. I like the idea of there being a creator, a higher power that we are accountable to for our actions and for our way of living. And to keep that creator happy, what do you think you should do? Just be a good person. Be obedient. To them. To the truth. Explain. I think people know what to do and they don't do it. I think many people lie to themselves. They know what truth is and they avoid it. They know what good is and they avoid it. We live in a world where there's people that do not want to be held accountable to this idea of there being an absolute truth. Are you religious? No. Religion to me is a construct of how other people have been in relationship with God. 
Have you read the Bible by chance? I recommend Everybody's you read it. Everybody's saying I should do it. So maybe that's God telling you to read it. Have you heard of King David? King David has a son. His name is Solomon. There's a story in the Bible where Solomon is dreaming and God comes to him in dream state. And he says, anything that you want, I will give you. If you want wealth, I'll give you wealth. I'll make you the richest man. If you want kingdoms, I'll give you the kingdoms. Tell me whatever it is that you want and I'll give it to you. And Solomon didn't ask for riches, didn't ask for kingdoms. He asked for one thing. He said, give me wisdom. And God gave him wisdom. After that, the riches came, the kingdoms came. So as I read that, I sat there and I was like, God, give me wisdom. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what this means, but give me wisdom. And from that, everything else will come. My relationship with God is now a pursuit of truth and a pursuit of wisdom. And I think it's working. Honestly, the way this individual explained on how he perceives things and about religion and things like that, I kind of am on an equal agreement with this because that's basically my concept of it as well. But he words it so much better than I can. So if you ever want to know my thought process on this type of content, that's basically how I think as well. Let me know in the comments on your thoughts about this, if you agree, disagree, or if I should probably change my mindset to a more realistic mindset. Just let me know on what your version of a more realistic mindset is because I'm always interested in hearing about it. I'm not going to get out because it's so active right now. I didn't saw some shit in the sky tonight that will forever change my life. <laughs> Man, listen, we are not alone. We are not alone. That's deep. Hold up, let me turn it. I need y'all to see what I'm seeing right now. Wow. That's the first time I heard thunder. And I've been recording for about 15 minutes. There is a ball of light, y'all. I thought it was the damn moon. And, ooh, the hell was that over there? Man, oh, hell no. Let me turn a little bit. It's, it's doing some shit over here, boy. I didn't see little lights going shooting up into the clouds. I thought maybe it was some weather, you know, how they measure storms and shit. At first, I thought it was that. Uh-uh. Y'all. Look at this green light coming in right here. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That's what just came on, y'all. Look at that green light. It just appeared. It, that, that bad boy just came in. Oh, my God, y'all. I mean, to me, that kind of looked like heat lightning. I could be wrong, but I did see some of the, the straight flashes and everything, but I think that was just heat lightning. What do you guys think? I'm convinced. This is why they're banning TikTok. Listen to what she has to say and tell me you don't. There's a saying in China that Western medicine cures the symptoms, but traditional Chinese medicine cures the root problem. Taking into consideration that the definition here acknowledges mind, body, and environment regarding traditional Chinese medicine. I also want to expand this in general to holistic healing. So she said, growing up in China, there was no stigma around herbal medicine. Now that we're all connected, it's become obvious. Western medicine doesn't have the cure for everything. No matter where you're from, there's some sort of herbal remedy for whatever that ails. Things like elderberry for a cold or mullen if you got a nasty cough or bronchitis, or COPD. But here in the West, that's looked down upon. I've already talked about how medicine is a big business. If you want natural solutions, first start by reading. You can find most of this stuff in health food stores, 
If not, you can order it online. I'm a big believer if you are sick, there is a cure out there for you somewhere that is natural. Like whether it is cancer, tumors, things like that, I truly do believe that there's something out there that can help cure that. We just do not know what it is or we've lost that information from the past because organizations do not want us to have that type of information. But I definitely am a big believer that there is a fix to the cause of the whole problem. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. As always, if you were interested in any of these clips that we watched today, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.